And Darius Riddick here, a.k.a. Riddick Line, a.k.a. the Elite Athlete. And today, we're taking it up, up back to the basics to one of my favorite foundational lifts. It's quite complex, but you know what? I'm going to teach you how to do it all right, and that is the deadlift, okay? Now, for those of you that have been watching me, watching the page, know that I absolutely la, 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 love the deadlift, okay? So, what I'm going to do is start from the bottom, and we're going to make a hit, all right? I'm going to show you guys how to do it right, the proper form, starting off from the beginning. For those of you that want to learn how to do the deadlift correctly now, with that being said, you'll see a lot of versions of the deadlift out there, okay? A lot of people like to change up small stuff, change it different ways, do different stances, do all kinds of other weird shit, all right? Now, this is coming from a four-time champion world record holder, okay? The way I'm going to show you is the proper way that I feel how you should do deadlifts to build up that strength, to have lateral back strength, to keep the posterior chain in alignment and to ultimately have a dynamic fucking deadlift, all right? So if that's something you're interested in, be sure to like the video, be sure to subscribe. Let me know that you guys enjoyed the video and man, let's get to it because it's gonna be a fucking awesome one, okay? All right. So we're here with our friend Barry the Barbell, okay? And before he gets into helping us out with how we're gonna complete this lift, right? There's a couple things that I just wanna say. All right, so first things first, mental and physical you know, capabilities. Do you have any you know, mental ailments that may stop you, something on your mind that's kind of your judgment from keeping you fully focused in the moment, 100% mindful when you're doing this lift? You need to make sure that's taken care of, okay? One of those things is you have to clear your mind and be completely mindful of where your body position is at all times when it comes to the complex lifts, all right? And the reason why I'm a huge advocate of that is because these lifts are so complex. Like I said, they use multiple muscle groups and they use multiple movements, all right? And if you are not completely in the moment, then that opens up those doors for injury, all right? Now, with that being said, on the physical aspect, if you have any injuries, low, like in your lumbar, in your traps, in your back, or knees, or anywhere that may prevent you from completing this lift in a safe manner, then this probably is not the lift for you, okay? Because you need to make sure you are healthy when you're doing this, right? Because if you have an injury, one, that's dumb. You should be making sure that's taken care of, right? Because longevity is key. And two, this guy is really, really mischievous, all right? Now, if you don't do him right, then one, you won't grow, and two, it, it'll open up that door for more injuries, all right? And we don't want that, okay? We want to be healthy. So, keep those two things in mind as we're moving forward. Now, a couple things before we, we get started that you'll need to basically kind of set yourself up for success when you're doing this, all right? Now, what I want you to keep in mind is practice how you play, all right? So, when you are setting up your barbell, there's no need to do it with uh, when, when it's on the ground, okay? You don't have to do super heavy weight, but you wanna do it kinda at the position where you're going to be actually performing the lift. So if that's with the, the tiny little disc plates or if that's with these big boys, wherever your position is going to be, that's where you're gonna practice from, right? Because when you practice how you play, it makes you that much more lethal, that much more efficient when it comes to performing this complex lift. And on the same topic of practicing how you play, Right, the thing is you wanna find a level surface when you do this, okay? You wanna be flat because you're gonna pull in a vertical manner, right? You're not gonna be rounded, you're not gonna be throwing it forward, you don't wanna be angled, and the same goes for your footwear. You know, I see a lot of people that have like these massive heels when it comes to their deadlifts and stuff like that. Now, if you're an Olympic lifter, stuff like that is okay, right? Because you have to have that leverage when you're pulling that kind of way. But for somebody who's trying to develop their deadlift the correct way, if you're trying to get stronger, or you're trying to develop your back strength, I highly, highly, super highly recommend a flat heel, okay? A flat surface, something that is completely straight, that doesn't have that massive like step on it, all right? Because that is gonna keep you on that level surface too, and it's gonna help you that much more when you go to perform the lift. All right, so when we come down to our friend Barry here, right? We wanna take a look at him, make sure that he's good. You know, he's he's a nice bar that's gonna give us a lot of leverage. You know, he's still good. He's, his neuralings, not all chipped, not all scoured. But the biggest thing that we have to look for to make sure that we're using the correct bar. Yes, there is a correct bar for deadlifts. Crazy, right? So what we want to look for is this non-neural portion of the bar, okay? So we have the neuraling, the metalized portion where it's really hard, where it gives us more grip. And then we have this smooth portion in here, right? This smooth portion is absolutely important. This has to be here, right? Because for those of you that are just starting off, you may have the tendency to hit your shins a lot, okay? Now that shit really hurts if you were to hit your, your, your shins with this neural portion, right? So this smooth portion is actually here for a reason. It's here, so if you do manage 
to hit your shins, it's not gonna completely tear your soul out, all right? All right, so now, now that we're where we wanna be on the bar, okay, we're looking at this smooth portion, the non neural portion of the bar. Okay, now I remember I mentioned earlier, there are multiple ways to do the deadlift, okay? There's sumo, conventional, abstract, there's all kinds of ways, right? But if you wanna build the lift the correct way, if you wanna do things right, we're gonna do it conventional conventional deadlift okay so that means our feet are not going to be way out here right there is a way to do that but that's not going to build the strength how you want to right now if they're just outside shoulder width that's still not minimizing our silhouette okay when we minimize our silhouette that makes our strength very linear so it only has one path and that one path is what's going to hold all our power okay so we're going to minimize it as much as possible so we're going to have it right inside that newer portion about shoulder width apart two to three inches away from the bar okay that's where our feet position should be. Once our feet are here, this is where they're gonna stay. They're not moving out of this spot, okay? Pretend like your feet are fucking glued to the floor. That's where they're gonna stay. They're not moving, they're gonna all right? be, okay? This is where our grip is gonna start from. Now, we got other bar, right? Two, three inches away from our shins, shoulder width apart on that non-neural portion, okay? So when we go down to get our grip, like, well, like I said, okay, you'll see a lot of people doing the switch hitter grip, right? Switch hitter means one hand, you're usually your non-dominant or it's the support side is gonna be supinated, right? So facing towards your body. And the other hand, your strong side hand, your dominant hand is gonna be pronated. That means away from your body, right? This maximizes your potential to pull the weight because now your body is moving in a synergistic effect, okay? So we're, they're working in tandem. They're working together, opposite, but together, right? Now, we're not going to start our foundational lift like that, okay? We're going to start our foundational lift with both of them pronated, okay? That means they're going to be facing like this, facing forward, okay? Just remember that, facing basically away from us. So if you were to make a fist, they'd be faced just like this, and they're going to be on the bar. Now, the reason why we're doing that is because we want to build that posterior strength, okay? When we're developing this lift, we want to make it stronger. If we're if we're developing a lift like this with switch hitter grip, then we're not gonna develop our muscles evenly, right? One side is always gonna be stronger than the other. Just like any other lift, when you're doing pull-ups, when you're doing rows, when you're doing seated rows, when you're doing barbell lifts, you always wanna make sure your grip is even, right? Because if it's uneven, you wouldn't lift uneven, would you? Exactly, so the same concept is gonna apply here whenever we start doing our deadlift. All right, so our foot position is straight, right? We're kinda, we're, we're not even gotten into the, the position yet, but we know where our grip is gonna be, okay? So we know that this soft portion is where our shoulder width is, right? This is where we should be. This is where our feet should be. We're going right outside of that, remember? Facing away, we're going right on the bar right there, right? And we get a nice, tight grip. This is gonna be the position where we pull from. Here, you can move all the way around. Start dancing, whatever you want to do. As long as those feet don't move and you know your grip is nice and tight and ready to go. Cool? Cool. All right, so now that we're here at the bar, we got our foot position right, we got our grip right where we want it to be. Okay, next part is engaging the very bottom part of our posterior chain, right? Because that's where a lot of our power to pull is going to come from. So I want to call this taking a seat. Why right? you want to take a seat? Now you see a lot of the professional athletes, a lot of the powerlifting athletes, when they take a seat, they'll put like a little roll to it, right? I find that like extremely easy, okay? But if you're not comfortable doing that just yet, right, all you're trying to do is sit your butt down. And what that's going to do is engage those hamstrings and engage those glutes, all right? So get your grip ready. If you want to do your roll, you can do your roll. Boom. This is where we're taking a seat, right? We're nice and engaged, okay? Engage. See that? That's that engagement. All right. Now, whatever you need to do to get there, that's our next step. That's where we want to be. So again, we got our feet, got our alignment, got our grip. All right. Let's take a seat. Boom. Now we're right here. Okay. Now, next part is we're gonna keep moving on up. All right. So we're gonna go into our lumbar, up into our traps, up into our rhomboids. All right. And keep, just engage everything now. Right. This is where we're gonna start bringing everything together. Okay. So now we're taking our seat. Now, what we're gonna do is roll our shoulders back, okay? So you might feel a little bit of the slack leave the bar. Okay, so take a seat, roll your shoulders back, and that's gonna engage the rest of your back. Now, when you do all of this, right, you wanna start from the bottom and just work your way up. Now, it's okay to take it slow because you're not trying to jump into it too fast because I promise you, 
When you do this shit right, when you work from the bottom and you work all the way up to the top, your lift is gonna get some, like ridiculously strong. And that goes for even my top athletes, my elite athletes right now, for you guys too. Even if you're a world record holder, all right? When you start from the basic foundations and work yourself up to where we are now, I promise you your lifts will go up, even if your PRs are about like five or 10 pounds. That's, that's a lot, you know, when you're, when you're doing champion stuff. We pretty much covered most of the fundamentals, all right? But we're gonna go through it one more time, and this is where we're gonna start focusing on actually performing the lift, okay? So, remember, feet shoulder width apart on that non-neural portion of the bar, okay? Now, on the neural portion of the bar is where we're gonna get most of our grip from, okay? So, once we have our grip, once we know where our feet are gonna be, we wanna take a seat. We take a seat, engage those hamstrings, engage those glutes. Now we're gonna start moving up our lumbar, strengthen it up, get that structural alignment, right? And now we're gonna engage our back and that slack comes out of the bar. Now when it comes to your actual, like where you're looking, your sight, it really depends for everyone. It's different for everyone, excuse me. But what is most important and what I want you guys to remember is structural alignment. Whatever view you need to keep your back straight and safe, all the way down is the view that I want you to take. Now for myself, I take about 15 to 18 inches out in front of the bar, and that's the point that I keep in my sight the entire time, all right? I'm not too keen of like having my head here and then slowly turning it up because my spine does not work that way. If my spine is straight when I'm here, then my spine is gonna be straight when I'm here too. You see that? It's the same exact thing all the way up and all the way down. I don't wanna be doing this or looking around or anything like that because that again opens that door for injury and we don't want that. All right, so last but not least before we perform the whole thing, what I wanna talk about is the lockout, okay? Now, a lot of people I I've noticed kind of struggle with this and basically the keys to success with the lockout, right, is really squeezing those glutes when you get to the top. You even notice when you're just standing here, if you squeeze your glutes, it's almost like you're humping the air, right? Like your, your, your hips go forward. That's the key right there. A lot of people, when they go to lock out, they get to about right here and they're still pulling with their back. But you forget that you have all this power from your glutes all the way down to your hamstrings that can give you that extra ump, all right? So, when we get everything the correct way, okay? We get our grip in here, take a seat, align everything, straighten up our back, keep it where we need to be, and we come in here, and we're about right here, that's when the glutes lock in, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, so basically what I'm gonna do now is start from the very beginning and talk you all the way through it, but I'm gonna do it really quick and then I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like in action, okay? Without you having to listen to me yab my gab. But basically a couple things I want you to remember is keep it healthy. Longevity is key, right? When we take care of our body, we take care of our mind, they both take care of us, okay? So make sure you don't have any injury or anything like that that may stop you from completing this lift 100%, okay? Uh, the second thing is, you'll see a whole shit ton of deadlifts out there. You'll see people doing it right, you'll see people doing it wrong, you'll see somewhere in between. In order to do this right, we start conventional, right? We work our way up from the foundation and we build our back strength, we build the lift, how we should be, how a complex lift should be completed, okay? And then the next thing is making sure you take care of your grip, take care of your body, and make sure we're doing stuff right. You gotta take it slow, regardless of whether you're just starting out or you're an elite athlete, the fundamentals is what's gonna get us to that elite top 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 status okay so without further ado let's finish this bad boy up